we're going to look at balancing redox equations and some of them are simple some of them are difficult let's start with a simple one so something that we wouldn't need any special technique to to balance so magnesium uh, would react with copper 2 chloride to make magnesium chloride and solid copper. We can look at the oxidation states for the metals involved here. Magnesium starts as zero, becomes positive two. Copper starts as positive two, becomes zero. So we can say that copper is reduced from plus two to zero, while me magnesium is oxidized from zero to positive two. Okay, we could all balance this equation, no problem. Right, we can see already that the coefficients are all just going to be one. I don't need any special techniques to handle the balancing of this reaction. Okay, um, it's, it's very easy to see um, what the oxidizing and reducing agents are. Okay, so again, quite straightforward. And in some cases, uh, that's this is all we would need to do. All right. Now, um, for more complicated oxidation reduction reactions, we're going to introduce a technique that's going to ask us to split the overall chemical reaction into half reactions or half equations. And what we do is we actually want to pull out the oxidation half reaction and the reduction half reaction. So using this simple reaction that I've got shown here, I'm going to write the oxidation half reaction which I would, in which I would say magnesium goes to magnesium 2 plus plus 2 electrons. Okay. Notice that the, uh, I would say that this is both mass and charge balanced, meaning that there's the same number of atoms on both sides and the charges on either side of the equation are equal. Okay, below that you can see the reduction half reaction. Notice the electrons appear on the opposite side uh, than they do during the oxidation half reaction. All right, again, it is both mass and charge balance. The other thing that we'll look at here is that the chlorines aren't written in either of these half reactions. These are spectator ions, and we can tell that because their oxidation states don't change throughout the course of the reaction. So it's actually common practice to omit spectator ions when working with specifically oxidation reduction reactions. All right, it just sort of cleans up the uh, your workflow. All right, we can always put them back in later on. All right, but I can go up here and show you that chlorine is negative one, it stays negative one, so these are what we would call spectator ions.